Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Swanky Cat Productions channel where I put one new video out like this every week. So if you enjoy what you see here today, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Today I'm going to show you how to directly wire some auxiliary lights to your Gen 3 KLR 650. I'm going to be installing these 10 degree spotlights from Nylai. Huge thanks to them for sending all this stuff out for me to test today. These put out supposedly about a thousand lumens each and they should shoot a pretty good beam down the road. 10 degrees is pretty tight, which is I think what I want. I'm going to mount these up right to my test crash bars somewhere around there. I've got the smaller version of the Nylai bar clamps here to mount those to. Make sure you get the size that goes down to 7 eighths of an inch. These should grab the tusk bars pretty well. They should really grab any crash bar fairly well, I would think. Now, a lot of the lights that you find online now do come with a wiring kit. These do not. They just have two wires snipped and stripped at the end here. And I will be able to plug those directly into the factory plug. I'll show you the special terminals that we need to stick in these little capped connection points here. Then this will basically just turn these lights on anytime that the key is on if you have the relay plugged into the port right here this will not come standard on any of the base model versions it's only in there on the adventure model but once this is pushed in here in connecting your circuit anytime you turn the key on all of the factory wiring gets electrified so that means the plug here for the 12 volt socket if you've got the usb socket over there i've got a set of tusk repeaters in there instead um, and then also finally, of course, this plug here that all gets turned on. I guess there is one plug on the opposite side underneath the tank that you're supposed to plug the factory grip heaters into. I haven't found a use for that yet. You don't necessarily have to pull any of these panels off because you can just get to that plug right inside of the fender here. Originally, I had planned on installing this Nylai rocker switch, which lights up when it's turned on. However, it seems like Kawasaki, for some reason, decided to make this just a hair too big, and it doesn't really have the, the right edge in there for this thing to grab, so basically just kind of hangs out in there or actually almost falls through. But basically, there's just nothing for those teeth to grab, so I'm just sort of giving up on that. And I really wish I would have known that to begin with, because to pull this thing out was a huge pain in the butt. Originally, I thought I could just pry it out, because I thought maybe there were just some clips on the back of it. But no, they've got three fasteners in here that you have to get in there with a Phillips screwdriver to reach. I had to pull out half of the plugs and stuff that are on stays in here is just a huge mess obviously I had to take half of the bike apart to get there so we're not going to go this route i'm just going to put this thing back here now after all that work and we'll just hardwire these things so i've got this plug back in place and i think if it ever does bother me enough that i want to stick a switch on here i probably could just drill a hole in this and install a rocker switch similar to what i've got for my test grip heaters in here the back portion of the switch would just have to be small enough to fit inside of this little cavity in here this piece like i said is a bit of a pain to get out but if you guys want to pull that out for one reason or another to remove that I just undid the fastener that goes into here did a couple pop rivets that go through your face plate here and then that gave me a little bit better access in there you can see the three Phillips head screws that I had to pull out I just used a little Phillips bit inside of a quarter inch ratcheting wrench so now I'll put all these back where they go plug my signal light back in get this all back together put my crash bar back on and then we'll actually get to start on this. So this is the bracket and the hardware that comes with the lights. Kind of like that that locks in like that. Just gotta make sure to put that on before you put this on. So we've got a pretty good range of rotation there, depending on how you need this bracket to be positioned. And the large bolt here just gets a washer and a nylock nut, which will go through this once we get this mounted. And these brackets come with a couple different size rubber shims. These will be super nice to isolate these lights from the heavy vibrations of the KLR. If you need a slightly larger size, there are other options out there. You just kind of got to do a search for your diameter of your bar that you need. I've got the fasteners preloaded with some medium strength thread locker. Get these into position. What do you think guys? Not bad at all. Those look like they're meant to be there almost. Definitely don't think they'll get in the way too much of anything. They're tucked in enough that if the bike goes over, they're not gonna get all smashed up like the factory adventure ones would. You gotta do a little bit of adjusting to get those both in the same position, but I'm liking that. 
So I'll put blue Loctite on all the fasteners here, get everything snugged up, and then once it's in the final resting position, I will start running the wires and get these things powered up. So to run these wires, I think what I'm gonna do is stick them just inside of this little hole in the fairing there. That way they're not gonna be too noticeable and they also won't be hanging down in this area where a stick or something could grab them and yank them out. And then once it's on the other side of the fairing, I think I'm just going to zip tie it up to the fairing stay rail right here and shoot that all the way over to the other side to meet up with the other one. So then I will just work back from this plug towards those lights. So I'm gonna pull these little rubber caps out of here. And that's gonna expose the slots for the terminals in there. I'll have a link to the website down in the description along with the description of the terminals that we need. I just grabbed some wire that I had laying around here. This is a little bit heavier gauge than both what's on the bike and definitely what's on the lights. Not really a huge deal to oversize. You definitely don't wanna ever undersize though. Then you'll have some warm wires. That is a little grommet. I'm gonna slide that over my wires. And that is the special little terminal. So the front part here is gonna get crimped onto the wire itself. And then this actually gets crimped onto the insulation. So for that, you do need a special crimpers. I'll have a link for these down in the description as well. Obviously you could just clip the factory plug off and hardwire these on. Do the tug test, seems like that'll stay. So I just double checked on the bike, the white wire is gonna be on the left side with the opening at the top here. So this just sort of pushes in and pops in place. There we go. Gotta be in the right direction, I suppose. I'll just slide my little grommet in there. Same thing for the black wire here. That one, of course, will go on the opposite side. That's ready to plug into the bike. Oops, I almost forgot my grommet on the black wire. I guess it's a good thing we don't have anything on this side yet. There, beautiful. And then to connect to the lights on the other side of this, I'm just gonna use some of these waterproof bullet connectors that I got off of the same website. So we'll get those crimped onto here and onto the wires from the lights and we'll power these things up. We'll get this plugged in first here so we know where the wiring is gonna all land. Probably kind of end up shoving that up underneath the fairing and zip tying it just in case we ever need any more. Then I've got both of the wires from the lights just stuck down here. These are also just kind of stuffed under the fairing. I'll have to zip tie everything up once I get these wires connected. These bullet connectors are going to work in a very similar fashion to the other ones. We're going to have to slide these grommets on over. And then I'm just going to crimp this onto the wire and the sheathing. There, doesn't that all look professional? I don't think you guys are gonna like what I'm gonna do on the other side, but I don't have anything else around here that's gonna work. So we'll figure out something for now for this side and maybe eventually I'll do it right later. That's right, my favorite guillotine connectors. A lot of people don't like these. I've heard people say that they don't work well, that they lose connection or have issues. As long as the wire size that they're rated for is the wire size that I've been using, I've never had an issue with them and I've put them on quite a few things. That way if I ever need to take these off the bars or wanna switch them over for something else or just need to take the bars off, whatever the deal is, I'll be able to disconnect it and I think it'll work for now, I guess. Only one way to find that out though. All right, let's see what we get when we turn the key on. Looks like we get a whole lot of light. Should probably get these off before they melt down there. Not bad for just a couple connections, a few bolts, and a little bit of work. So I've just got to throw some electrical tape around my guillotine connectors here and find a spot for all my wiring in a safe location up there where the bars aren't going to tear it off, zip tie that all up, and this thing will be good to go for a test ride. So of course we've got to start off with the all-important garage wall test here. So of course we've got the low beam and two oh, night lights on. Cover those up. Hopefully you can still see that. I suppose, are you looking through the windshield? You probably are. This is a horrible idea. Why didn't I install a switch? So a decent cutoff there, decent fill. Hands are feeling a little bit warm, so we will uncover our auxiliary lights here. And that definitely adds some brightness. I think maybe we'll aim that one down just a tad. So those should be shining right around the top of the cutoff there, more or less. 
definitely <laughs> very evident where they are. I'll turn the high beam on, and wow, the high beam looks pretty pitiful compared to these. <laughs> I was a little afraid that these were not going to be bright enough, but my gosh, those are a nice concentrated beam of light. Let's go see what these look like out on the road. Yes, that is snow in the ditches, and there's probably a bit of salt on the road here, so we won't go too far. Those are definitely noticeable. I've got to say, though, I almost do wish I would have went with a slightly wider beam. Uh, it does seem like this will be good because it's going to kind of focus that light and I can kind of aim that one maybe towards the ditch a bit. That'll be good. I'll give you a, a cover shot here for reference. That is just the low beam. Yeah, those add a good amount of light. And if we flip the high beam on, that looks pretty pitiful compared to those, honestly. Those are some pretty impressive lights, but yeah, I've got to say, man, I mm, I wish they were a little wider. I guess we could combine them with the high beam. And maybe that would have been the better thing to do is to hook them up just to the high beam and run them that way. If I run them like that, I'm going to be blinding people probably. <laughs> Definitely do shine in the ditches nice enough that we could easily see the deer that were sitting there waiting to jump out at us. We sweep the field. No deer. So yeah, out here too, I pretty much cannot tell whether or not the high beam is on. I guess just sitting still like that I can tell, but otherwise it's like it doesn't even do anything. Really kind of wish that I would have wired these in to just come on with the high beam. Yeah, I mean these are certainly impressive but I mean they pretty much just drowned everything out they're so bright <laughs> so I guess if that's what you're looking for just strictly to aim at the ditches then these are a good option but I think honestly I, I maybe will try something with a little bit more of a spread and maybe wire them into the high beam circuit instead definitely light things up. So if you guys are interested, link down in the description. Until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get.